I think I put a lot of pressure on myself just to um, just to succeed. A lot of the professionals have that, but I guess why why um, I am where I am because I love to compete and I love to um, you know, test my ability all, you know, all the time. Jared Hayne is fast becoming an NRL superstar for Parramatta. Wasn't really brought up in a you know, traditional uh, Islander family, but um, I definitely hung around a lot of Islanders and seen you know, how the elders has a lot of pressure to, to perform and to, to uh, provide for the family and stuff. Um, you know, I always wanted to be successful and always wanted to sort of get a job and look after mum and that. I think it's important too to, to know where you're from and to follow your tradition and follow your family line. I think that's the biggest thing for me, just to be able to um, find out you know, where I'm from and my language and the culture and stuff like that. The Pacific shoot for the island the traditional sort of outfits and stuff and Nigel Vangana was, was the one that sort of organised that. He jumped on board straight away, said, yeah, sweet, whatever you need. Um, you know, I'm there. Uh, you know, Jared was really proud. I think it was the first time he'd actually uh, participated in something like that, and and he'd had a uh, an up and down sort of um, uh, run into the game. You know, but I think he's uh, uh, over the last couple of years he's really found uh, found where his heart is. And just to to to, to realise that ancestors you know wore this, and to I think it really showed the spirit and the love that we have for the islands and. Just really wanted to give something back and, and to be proud and to honour those who've come before us. It's my house. You move over a bit. Powerhouse. Somewhere. It's not a powerhouse, it's my house. Should be, I should be more on the camera because it's like. It's because you're fatter, sweet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was awesome growing up with Chris. He actually lived about 30 metres from my, from my house that uh, I stayed at. And um, yeah, no, we had fun. He's like the older brother that you know I look up to and just leave him his example. But then sometimes I'm the older brother and got to uh, you know put him in good stead. And what about being a doggy? A doggy, number one doggy. Do you feel like a dog? Not really. But being a doggy? Nah. Your dog? <laughs> Your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the best memories was like when we used to come back from Harold Matt's training. We used to catch a train about 8:30 from Para. He used to always have money. And it was always his shop. but he used to make out, he had no money. And then as soon as we got there, he'd quickly run across to the kebab shop and get like a mad, massive pizza and um, this other like chicken sort of just all these carbs, you know what I mean? It wasn't about the quality, it was about all about the quantity when we ate. So just yeah, remember, remember that, having the mad feet on the way back from training and then getting home late as, waking up at six to go to school. I think because we had so, such big success when we were younger, it sort of fell upon us, you know, I was only, I was only 17 and I was playing Premier League, which is one, one before NRL, and I was only 17 and Inu was playing when he was 18. And you know, back then we were just more worried about getting our cars so we can drive around instead of catching trains and stuff like that. Like when I see Chris now, when he sees me, you know, it's still the, the muck around, the immaturity, the, the, you know, the, the friendship. Why well, are you train, man? You know I'm number one then. I think. Anyways. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing, you know, we used to, catch trains together and go to school together. Now we're actually playing in the big leagues and, and doing things big. Yeah, your cars aren't that big, so it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to see. I woke up this morning, the biggest change is that it's not funny when you drop a ball. <laughs> you don't got time to muck around in the big leagues, you know, and, and I, I think that's, that's, it is what it is. The, the, the mental part is probably something that you don't realise till, till you're in the fire. Jared Hayne fronted a massive media contingent this afternoon following one of the season's most controversial and contentious decisions. Yeah, just had to know whether I should cry, should jump up and down, to, and, um, just sort of overwhelmed and just finally said, you know, now I can uh, prepare for a grand final. I think being talented on the field, you also have to be talented sort of mentally as well to be able to deflect the criticism and, and the, the, the hurtful things people say because it can, it can get the people. You know, I really do believe that, that it's all about fun and, and having fun with your friends and that's what I do and that's why I enjoy playing rugby league. My motivation for this year is just sort of to get my body right, get it 100% because the better my body is the more I can compete and I guess that's, yeah, that's what I'll, 
want to do is just to be you know, the ultimate competitor.